Spirit 92.9 welcomes you to The Lunch Break with your friends, Josh, Jess, and Rachel. Join us as we chat about life, food, faith, and everything in between. Hello, and welcome to episode number two, two. two of The Lunch Break Podcast. I'm Jess, along with Josh from Mornings on Spirit 92.9, and Rachel is here from Afternoons on Spirit 92.9 as well. Today we're going to be talking about growing older. Woo! We started this podcast because our conversations around the lunch table always get real interesting, (laughs) and so we're like, we need to take this to a podcast and have a longer conversation, and a recent conversation that's been happening is about Growing older, much to Rachel's chagrin, she's hearing all of the uh, all of the worst parts of growing older. So we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's okay. Growing pains and gains. Got to have a positive view on it as well, right? That's right. So before we get to that, what did we bring for lunch today? Josh, yeah. what's in your lunch box? Yeah, so that's kind of where this podcast started is, you know, we, we had great conversations around the lunch table. So we're like, hey, let's start a podcast around this and let's actually bring our lunches. And so today I brought pot pie. I'm holding this up to- Josh's famous pot pie. Holding this up to the camera right now. You can watch this stream on YouTube. I'm trying to see. It's a little washed out right now, but uh, (laughs) it's very good. Oh, there you go. It's very simple. It has just vegetables and chicken and a nice crust. With gravy. It's really simple. It's really good. It's one of my favorite things. Comfort food. To make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I brought in my lunchbox today. Okay. Very I've impressive. had the, the joy of having Josh's uh, pot pie. I haven't had it yet. I was sick or something and everybody made me food. And it was really good, Josh. You're a good cook. Thank okay. You. So in my lunchbox, I don't know if you can see this, but I made sausage and peppers and onion. Nice. nice. It's super simple. It's like four ingredients. And then we eat it over rice. And it's just like. You can make it in like 20 minutes and have dinner on the table. So that's, that's the what I love best about it. kind of meal. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, Rachel, for me, I, uh, this is mine. So, I made, smells good. Thank you. <laughs> I made one pot Tuscan chicken. Um, so it has like shows make something fancy, Josh. It's it not fancy. Just- I know we just have like our simple foods, and Rachel's like, I got this, 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 and it's amazing. Chef Rachel has made for you, well, you know, a one um, pot Tuscan chicken dinner. <laughs> well, it, I like one pot meals because it makes you not have to clean ten yeah. million dishes okay. when you're doing it. Fair. So you just take like chicken and pasta and sun dried tomatoes and more tomatoes and. Yum. A bunch of other stuff, and it's probably one of my favorite meals ever, and it lasts me for forever. So, so yeah. good. And we are all sharing our recipes for our lunches in the recipe box at spirit929.com. So you can make them yourself. Yay. Yeah. Okay, so since we're talking about uh, getting older, growing pains and gains, I thought uh, we should figure out just how old we are oh, by uh-oh. playing a little game. Okay. So... Uh, this is the You're Getting Old game. We've actually played this before. Um, so just for a recap, I'm 26, Josh, you're 34, yep. and Jess 47. is 47. So we're literally all in different yes. decades, 20s, 30s, and 40s. Yep. So how this is going to work is I'm going to say a little prompt, and if you agree with it, you know, raise your hand. You say, yes, that's me, okay. um, and we'll figure out just how old we are. Okay. So all right. first one, are we ready? I'm ready. We're ready. You've said, 8 p.m. is too late to start a movie. (laughs) If so, what do you consider a reasonable time to start a movie? Absolutely, yes. (laughs) I'm usually in bed by 8 p.m., unless it's a weekend. (laughs) Okay, I was going to say, is this a Friday night? If it's a Friday night, 8 p.m. is not too late. Mm. Well, I'm... It dep- I'm really I'm still tired on the weekend, you know? <laughs> especially Friday because we've still gotten up and gone to work. So I'm gonna say a reasonable time is to start a movie is between six thirty and seven. Six thirty. I'm gonna say like seven to seven thirty is a pretty sweet okay. spot. Okay. Yeah, I agree. If I you I start mean, at eight. You're gonna be up until like ten thirty. I'll fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fall asleep halfway through. When it. do you normally go to bed? <laughs> Weekdays. When do you normally go to bed? I mean, usually by eight. Now I don't fall asleep right away. Sometimes I'm looking at my phone for a while, but 
Try to be in bed by eight. I get up at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I it's I go to bed a little later, but I mean I do the afternoon show, but I I can start a movie at eight p.m. and be just fine. <laughs> now, if we're talking about something that's like three hours long, we might be pushing it. Yeah. But like regular movie length, I can do it. Okay, fair. Okay. So so we're all getting old, is what we except for Rachel. <laughs> Well, I think you said absolutely no. I said maybe, and Rachel oh. said yes. Kind so that kind of all ages. checks out. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> number two, you've tied something down, patted it, and said, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> Is, does that mean you're old? I thought that was like a man thing to do. <laughs> Have you done that, Jess? I don't. I, I definitely did that while I was packing. Like when oh, I did my move. Moving, yeah. 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 I've done that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm getting have. older, guys. I'm getting older. <laughs> okay. Okay, number three. You've said, have I told you about my air fryer? Oh. <laughs> that one feels specifically targeted at Jess. I love my I've air fryer. That, I've said that too because I love my air fryer. Okay, Rachel being 20-something hat and loving pink has a pink I do. Air fryer. I do. So we have heard about yours. Yeah. I've shared a lot about mine and, and all the things that I've learned that I can cook in it. And I've shared a lot about my crock pot, which I feel yeah. like makes me <laughs> the old one here. <laughs> kind of does bump you up, Josh. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're all kind of on the same level there. Mm-hmm. Okay, number four. You've had to explain to someone younger than you that text messages used to cost five cents each. Oh, oh goodness. Okay, so I remember when I first got a cell phone, which was when I was a freshman in college, (laughs) uh, they did charge for text messages back then. So I had to be very careful because I had like only a certain amount of text messages per month and I had to make sure I wasn't going over that limit. Wow, that feels like a lifetime ago. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that too. And then my kids were kind of at that stage, like late middle school and wanting phones. And I was like, no way, because I knew... That they would rack up and go over our data and everything. And then when they did get phones, they did, of course, you know, mm-hmm. go over and send too many text messages. And yeah, that was a thing. We don't even <laughs> think about that now, right? Yeah. Or even back, you guys probably don't remember this. You used to have to make like long distance phone calls after 9 p.m. Otherwise they would cost you. What? But they were like free or cheaper or something after 9 p.m. And so yeah, I don't remember you couldn't that. call anybody. Outside of your area until after 9 p.m. Wait, so when you mean long distance, like long distance, like the city over type of thing? or um, I think if it's outside of your area code, if I remember. What? Wow. So if I wanted to call a friend in another state, not before 9 p.m. Oh, I'd be doomed. Cost if you that extra was, money. Yep. If that was still the case, I'd be doomed. <laughs> um, the one thing that I remember is when I had my first cell phone, I had one of those ones that like it would slide up oh, and it had the yeah. keyboard. Oh, I thought I was so cool when I had that. Those ones were cool. Um, but let's bring them back, honestly. Do you remember when you would text and you it only had like three letters on a number? Yeah. 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 Okay. So you'd have to like hit the number so many times to get that number or that letter and then it was so stressful to like type out a text. <laughs> I know. Wow. It's wild to think about some of the technological advances that yeah. we've lived you through. You kids don't realize how easy you have yeah. it these days. But I do remember there was like a an internet button on your phone mm. and my parents would always be like, do not hit that button. Do not hit it. It will cost that, one million yes, dollars. Exactly. So that was like the one button like, huh. and if you accidentally push it, turn your phone off immediately. Oh, that was what I did. Word. But I don't remember text messages being like, you know, we had gotten unlimited texting, I think pretty early on. Yeah. Yeah, well, we didn't always have that. <laughs> Back in my day, <laughs> we didn't okay. have that. Okay, <laughs> so last one. You still have cable TV and watch it. Oh. Never have. You've never, never had well. cable TV? No. <gasps> no, we were too poor to get that growing up. <laughs> no, it wasn't because of that. It was because it was too expensive, and so I'd watch it at my grandparents, oh. obviously. But no, I've, I've never had cable TV, nor do I ever plan on having it wow i i had cable tv growing up my parents still have it but now that i you know live on my own i don't Mm. i don't have it i stream everything yeah yeah everything's streaming now i was gonna say i did until a few years ago mostly so we could get football games and stuff and then i was like i'm paying a lot of money for something i don't really need because i can stream everything so 
oh, I'm not as old as your parents. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> I feel like that was such a win right there. My parents are going to hear this be like, okay, yeah. Jess, great. Just kidding, Just um, kidding guys. You, you don't look a day over 29. <laughs> Anyway, so I guess this from everything that we just went through, I think all of us are getting just a little bit older. Getting there. Yeah. But, you know, it's fun to see the differences between the three of us of what we've experienced, mm-hmm. like the whole texting thing. I do not remember the, that long distance calling. Are you kidding me? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Oh, yeah. It was a thing. Yeah, we used to have to, our phones were attached to the wall. Well, yeah, I... I like, saw that in movies and stuff. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> what? Did wow. she just say that? You did not just say that. <laughs> my grandma had one that was, like, attached oh, to the wall. It just keeps and, getting worse. <laughs> okay, but, like, so my grandma had one, but we had one of those ones that was, like, we had a landline, but it was wireless. So, like, you could take it all. I didn't, yeah. I didn't have to do the phone cord thing. Like, okay, so I was in the musical Bye Bye Birdie. And there's this whole number, like musical number, that's all about them being on the phone and like talking to each other. And they gave us like those analog phones with the cords and we were like play with them. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what it was like. That's so cute. (laughs) So glad Rachel could experience ancient history like that. See, when we were teenagers, our friends or whoever would call and you'd have to have a really long phone cord if you didn't have a phone in your room so that you could go in a closet or to your bedroom and take the call and... My grandma even had one of the rotary dial phones. Oh. Would you even know how to dial that where you dial no. it in a circle? It looks so fun, though. Oh, like, should, I'd love to do, do it a just video once. challenge with Rachel and make her try to figure out how to dial a phone number on one of those. <laughs> it looks so fun. But, uh, yeah. So I, fun. It's <laughs> like a fun old toy from the past. No, but uh, to think about how things have changed so much. Yeah. And it's, it's not even that many years that things have just changed drastically changed over and over again mm-hmm. and yeah. things even now are changing as far as technology goes it's it's crazy mm-hmm. and you know for all three of us we're all kind of representing different generations and yeah. different ages so we just kind of wanted to talk about what does it feel like right now for you at your age <laughs> it hurts <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just dive right into it. So, so Jess, at yeah, 47, yeah. how does it feel? How does it feel right now? Like what are what are the things that you're you're going through? Oh goodness. Well, yeah, I won't tell you everything. <laughs> we'll save the conversation for another time. Here's what I'll tell you. We were having this conversation the other day and people said that th- that the average person says they start to feel old at 39. And okay. I thought, no, that's too young. And and most of us agreed here that are over 39 that it was more like 45. We started kind of really feeling like we've crossed over. <laughs> We're on the other side of the hill. <laughs> We're just rolling down the other side of the hill. <laughs> but, I mean, that's about the time things started really, I mean, there was like unexplainable pain before that. But, um, like, my joints have hurt since I turned 45. I know when it's going to rain or it's going to snow. Based you can't actually, are... like, determine It's a thing. That. It's a thing. Your joints get a little swollen, and, and, yeah, it's weird. Or, you know, like, this week I've been limping around because my knee hurts, and I don't know why I it's didn't like, injure it. Your knee and your ankle alternate. It's like, all right, this week it's my knee. Next week it's my ankle. Oh, man, before you know it, I'm going to be needing a wheelchair or something. Here, no, but... don't say that. Don't say that. But, yeah, so, I mean, like, you feel old physically, for sure. You start seeing the wrinkles. Got my first little, like, one between my my brows here that's really obvious. You can't cover it up Are you scratching your eyebrows a lot? (laughs) It's from from frowning. And so, yeah, and some some crow's feet, they call the ones on the outside of your eye. Those are smile ones, so they're not bad. So you start to see the evidence of getting older. And plus, you know, I'm, I'm a... Mimi, too. I'm a grandma. Oh, yeah. And so that's a whole nother thing, that whole nother stage of life. But mm-hmm. yeah, there's just a lot. There's good and bad, though, right? Because with age comes wisdom. Mm-hmm. And there is a thing where you start caring less what people think about you, which is nice. I'm looking forward to that. I know. <laughs> My friend Sandy always told me when she hit 50 years old, she's like, I just stopped caring what everybody thought about me. And I'm mm. like, okay, I'm kind of looking forward to 50 because that's great. But I'm starting to feel that shift now a little bit where you're less concerned about what everybody else thinks and just more concerned about, you know, 
finding joy and growing mm. in your faith and enjoying life and that kind of stuff, you do start to feel that change. Yeah. So. Yeah. And about- I, I think one thing that I wanted to say, and I, I heard this once and I think it's beautiful, that like when you have wrinkles and you have these different changes that your body is going through as you get older, that is evidence that you have lived a full life. Mm. And so I think that that like that worry of, oh, I need to take care of my wrinkles. And I know I'm only 26 and I'm thinking about this, <laughs> but like for thinking about the future, like, yeah, I'm going to have wrinkles and my body is going to change. And that's mm-hmm. like oh my gosh, I have lived a full life. And isn't that beautiful that like I can say I had these crow's feet because I laughed a lot or like Mm -hmm. I have these wrinkle lines around my mouth because I've smiled a lot. And how Mm -hmm. beautiful is that? You have physical evidence of that. Um, Anyways. Yeah, you've survived a lot of hard things. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a lot of wisdom and uh, you've just learned a lot of things along the way as well. And so it's just, it's it's a good mix, right, Mm -hmm. of, of hard things that have taught you hard lessons and good things that you can look back on and enjoy. Mm -hmm. So So Josh, you're in your 30s. How's it feel, dude? 34. (laughs) Tell her what she has to look forward to. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of weird because I sort of thought I'd be in my 20s forever. Mm, And then suddenly one day I was 30 and now suddenly I'm, I'm 34. And it's, in some ways, it's almost like time is going faster the older I get. I, I don't really feel old, but I also see myself getting more out of touch with like what is cool yes. these days. <laughs> I don't I, I don't have TikTok. I guess technically I have an account, but I'm not like on TikTok watching all those. What are they? They're just TikToks. TikToks. They're not reels. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are you young <laughs> whipper snappers call them? Instagram, <laughs> TikToks for TikTok. <laughs> but that's the thing. I'm getting I'm getting less and less in touch with what is cool and what is hip these days Mm. I still feel I think physically I feel pretty good but I don't I definitely don't feel as athletic as I did 10 (laughs) years ago I have a little brother who's 16 years old and he's pretty much outpaced me in in every sport that I ever played (laughs) and so that's kind of depressing uh with that being said I'm still I'm very active and I I go to the gym a lot. I, I get out hiking and things like that. So physically, I still feel pretty good and in some ways better than I have at other points in my life. Uh, but also, I think when I was younger, I kind of thought, you know how you kind of have that thought where I'll sort of have everything figured out by a certain point in uh, my life. Huh, felt, and felt. <laughs> I don't know if I ever specifically defined an age, but if you had asked me when I was, you know, 10, 12 years old, I probably would have thought I'd have things more figured out at age 34 than I do now. <laughs> I don't have everything figured out. No. I'm just going to throw that throw that out there, and I don't know if I ever will. But with that being said, I have gained wisdom along the way and life experience, some hard life experience, but good life experience, and there's there's been a lot of beauty and a lot of joy in getting to where I'm at now. Yeah, and yeah. news flash. At 47, I'm over here. You, you, you still won't have it all figured yeah. out. I don't think we ever do. So. I'm 26 and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man. Rachel, but, yeah. 20s, remind us what that's like. So <laughs> I'm, I'm at this weird age of 26. So I think for me, like you were talking about, Josh, having that specific age in your mind of like, yeah, I get to that age. I'm going to have everything figured out. That was 25 for me. Mm-hmm. And so I reached 25 and I was like, okay, here we are. I still don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And now I'm at 26 like, hey, I still don't know what's going on. So 26 is like this weird, like, I'm still in my 20s, right? But mm-hmm. I'm on that like second half of my 20s. Mm-hmm. So 21 feels so far away, which 21 is like the, oh, you're an adult. Yeah, let's yep. go. You don't know what you're doing, but let's go. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's that age of like you're in college or you're graduating college and you're, you know, getting into the workforce and all of that. And then now at 26, I'm like, oh, I'm closer to 30, which feels scary. And not that 30 is bad, but it's like it's a 30 milestone. is 30. It does. And it's like, yeah. It feels big when you're in your 20s. Yes. Yeah. And so 30, it's like, oh, wow, I really got to have things figured out by 30. Um, so I, I guess I'm just in this is like kind of limbo spot right now where I just feel everything feels weird. And then 
I've had so many people say, oh, your 20s are the best years of your life and you're going to love it. And I'm like, I'm going through it. Like, I'm trying to figure out who I am, what is my place in this world. I think of my place in this world. Um, (laughs) But, you know, it's just a time where you are going through so many things all at once. Like, I think about, I never would have thought at, like, a younger age, oh, so when you turn 25, you're going to see... All of your friends go through different things, like they're getting married, they're having kids. You're also watching your grandparents get older. And you, unfortunately, I have seen some pass. And so you've gone through <clears throat> so much hurt and growth and like incredible experiences, but also some really, really hard things. And it's all in that span of your 20s. And it's like, w- your childhood feels so far behind you Mm -hmm. and then adulthood feels like it's here, but it's also like I have so much to keep going towards. And so it's this weird spot of like, I'm feeling so many different emotions at once of like, yes, I love this. And also, oh wow, this is really hard. Mm. Like so many things happening at the same time and it's weird so that's how my 20s are going <laughs> it is a strange it is a strange place to be though because you're like i'm not a grown-up yet but i'm yeah. supposed to be yes acting like a grown-up now and yeah. sometimes i just feel like i'm still 16 and oh my gosh and then i feel Same. the pressure to act yeah. like i'm 30 you know yes like, i remember literally. i'm yeah. like i'm just a girl like i'm literally just like i'm 16 i don't know what i'm doing like everyone be nice to me please <laughs> i'm just gonna say i sometimes experience that same thing even in my 30s like yeah I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like a teenager. <laughs> Somebody find me a real adult. No, I need a trusted adult to help me, please. I need a trusted adult to sign this permission slip. It's me. Oh. I'm the adult. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, but it's so yeah. it's it's nice to know that I'm I'm not alone in that of like even at our three different stages of life. We are all experiencing that same feeling of like we don't know what we're doing. And that's it's it's kind of comforting to know nobody yeah. knows what they're yeah. doing. And that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing, whatever age you are, you've never been there before. Oh. Right? Yeah, that's and true. so it's always going to be new and there's always going to be mm-hmm. something new that you're learning or experiencing and so we just got to throw out that idea of whatever getting there means or having yeah. it all figured out and just realize like that's what life is. It's constant change and growth and, and opportunities to learn, right? So yeah. whether you're in your 20s or your 40s or older than that, it's it's new every day. Yeah. And so there's nothing weird about that. I know yeah. you said you, it feels weird, but it all feels weird no matter what <laughs> yeah. age you yeah. are because it's all new. There was uh, something that I heard of like, so you turn 21 and it's like, all right, we're officially an adult. And then when you turn 22, it's like, okay, you are a one-year-old adult. <laughs> and then 23 and 24. So after that, you figure out from there, that's how old you really are in adulthood of like what you were saying. Mm. You haven't experienced that age before. So if you're an adult at 21, then every year after that is like, OK, there's another year of being an adult and there's another year of like we're still babies yeah. and we're still figuring it out. And mm. that's OK. Yeah. Yeah. It takes the pressure off, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, to feel like you have to be a certain way or feel a certain way Hmm. or or have this or that figured out because life is just constantly changing Mm -hmm. and your story is constantly you know still being written and so helps you go with the flow a little bit more yeah Mm -hmm. so questions from the lunchbox yes Yes. it's time each episode we draw some questions out of a lunchbox it's out of mine today yeah i (laughs) i may or may not have forgotten my lunchbox on podcast recording day (laughs) So we're, we're drawing questions from Rachel's lunchbox, which I will say does not make the cool metallic sound. I'm sorry, that mine it's does. fabric. It's not quite as noisy. No sound effects with that one. Jess, you want to draw our first one? Yeah, I can do that. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Yes. All right. What is a prayer that you had years ago, and now years later you're living in the answer to that prayer? Ooh, Who that's wants a big to go one. First, I can start with this one. I think. I think even being in this job where I am right now at Spirit 92.9 was an answer to a prayer that, Mm -hmm. you know, I had coming out of college, wanting a job, wanting to find a place in the radio industry. And here I am 
you know, 11 years later and I've been at the same job and, and, and not only my prayer too, but I know my parents pray for me all the time. And so they were praying for a job for me. And so it's kind of cool that, and I, I don't always think about this, but I'm living in fulfillment of that prayer mm. just by the place I'm working at. You took mine. Oh. <laughs> I was going to bounce off that too. So. <laughs> That's why I wanted well, to go first. Honestly, <laughs> I'm just thinking back to when I was Rachel's age. And I by by that age, I already had three young children. And, uh, you know, I was like, okay. So I was a stay-at-home mom for a time. I taught in my kids' preschool. I worked a little bit at the hospital. and But I was just like, what's my, like, what am I going to do when they grow up? Who am I going to be? What am I going to do for work. And so uh, God led me here as well, 16, did I say 16 or 17 years, 16 years ago, and uh, just opened the door. It wasn't even one I was looking to walk through. And he opened the door and he has used it to provide for me. And I didn't know what my story was going to hold with, you know, you know, ending up um, as a single mom and all of this stuff and how God is just, he was paving the way, way back then, you know, to take care of me and provide for me. And and let me use my my voice and my creativity for his glory. So yeah. it's just kind of cool to to look back and reflect on that. Well, that's the thing. That's one of the cool things about aging is that the older that you get, the more you can look back and see this is how God has been faithful in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can see maybe specific areas even even during hard times where God has been faithful to you that you might not have necessarily felt in that season, mm-hmm. but you look back and and you can see his faithfulness and how he was taking care of you and leading you all the way. Mm-hmm. Really cool. How about you, Rachel? How would you well, I'm going to jump on the job bandwagon. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, um, a prayer that I had been praying for myself and that my family and friends had been praying for me is that I would find a job where... I had a seat at the table and I was a valued member of the team and I had been praying for that for a really long time and also finding a job where the gifts that God has given me are being used every day and um, being used for his glory. And so uh, this job is an answer to that. And uh, it's, it's something that I had been really intensely praying for for a really long time because the time where I was looking for jobs was in the middle of COVID. Mm hmm. Which was, hey, the worst time ever. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the job that I had first, I loved it, but I was ready for more. And I knew that God had more for me. So I kept praying, okay, if you're going to give me more, then give me more. Um, And so... The, the way that I got here is such a <laughs> such a crazy story of how I ended up here and it's I it's God like mm-hmm. I, every time I think about it I'm like so I moved from Ohio to Florida and then Florida to Minnesota <laughs> and that's wild and crazy Culture shock. yeah no <laughs> kidding um but you know it's just every time I come here and I I show up to work, and I'm just surrounded by incredibly supportive, Christ-filled people. It just blows me away. And I can only say thank you, God. Mm-hmm. So Love it. Yeah. We're glad you're here. Oh, you guys. <laughs> I to cry. Okay. All right. Moving next on. Question. Next question. Next question. Okay. I'll draw the next one. I cut these and they're horrible, so it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I would not have done any fault. better. <laughs> oh, okay. At this age... Right now, what is God teaching you? Hmm. Jess? Uh, patience. <laughs> <laughs> so much pa- patience and trust. I'm going to say those two things. I've got a unique situation with my three older kids being grown, and then I've got a six-year-old. Uh, that was a happy little surprise uh, later in life. And so she is so full of life. She's so funny. She's so sweet. And she's also got some challenges that make... Just the everyday a little more difficult than for the average kiddo. And so um, leaning into God and trusting his plan in these days is something. I mean, I've had to do it before, but I sure feel like I've been doing it more recently than ever before. And then just being patient and trusting you know, in his timing as well. Uh, this is something I read the other day on the air that just it's it's powerful for me right now. Um, but it's it's speaking truth over myself, and and it says I'm at peace with God's plans and timing, 
And I feel mm-hmm. like I have to repeat that every day because nothing is happening in my life <laughs> in my plan or my timing. God has far different plans than I've had for myself. And so just learning to lean into that and to trust that mm-hmm. he knows the big picture. I don't know what the end of this story is going to look like, but he does. And he's using it for something good. So just believing in that. I'll bounce off of that. Trust. Yeah. Trust is a big thing that the Lord has been teaching me of trusting that he does have plans for me and he has a bigger purpose for me than what I can think of myself. And um, I think trusting in the gifts that he has given me and being confident in those gifts that he has given me. um, Because I think one thing that I think a lot of people my age struggle with is we diminish ourselves a lot. And so like for me, I, we've talked about this before, I compare myself to other people and Mm. um, it's just, it's, it's a struggle because how can you not, when I was raised with social media, naturally comparing myself to literally everyone around me um, and also holding, holding myself to an absolutely impossible standard that no one can reach. And so as far as like trusting Trusting that God has placed me where I am for a reason, that where I am has incredible holy value, and that he has incredible things in store for me. So I don't have to compare myself. I don't have to doubt the things that he has done for me. I can trust in that and trust that things are going to be okay. Yeah. 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 Josh? Well, apparently this is every stage of life because trust is one of the things that came to mind for me too. God is always giving us opportunities Mm -hmm. to trust him and it is always hard. Yeah. It's always hard. Like there are times for me when I'm kind of like, when I kind of feel like maybe I messed something up that, oh, maybe this was the plan and I messed it up. Oh, yeah. And yet, I've heard this before that... (laughs) we cannot mess up God's plan, right? Like we don't have that kind of power to mess up God's plan. And so we can trust him. And yeah, I think in every season, and both of you said it better than I will, but in every season we have opportunities to trust him. And I think I have opportunities right now to trust him. Yeah, yeah, we all do. You're right. At every stage and every age, we have that opportunity. So On that note, let's end on a positive note, shall we? That we're all just learning and growing and uh, given opportunities at whatever age we are to trust God and to grow closer to him. Mm -hmm. And there's comfort in that, Mm -hmm. that all we're all representing different generations and we all are struggling with the same thing. So I think an ending note on all of this is you are not alone in the things that you're you're struggling with. Everyone around you is probably going through very similar things, no matter what age they are. Mm -hmm. So as we get older, as we experience those growing pains, the gain is that you are never alone. Mm -hmm. So... Well said. Well said, Rachel. And on that note, we are out of time for today. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to the lunch break. We hope you found it relatable. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hey, please subscribe. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts. You can watch the video version on our Spirit 92.9 YouTube channel. Please uh, give us five stars and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Oh, and also... If we made you hungry with those recipes <laughs> that we listed earlier, those are in the recipe box at spirit929.com. Thanks so thanks that. again for listening, and we will see you next time on the Lunch Break Podcast. Bye.